Hey guys, so uh, one of the videos I did recently talking about kind of getting a sneak peek, giving myself a little bit of a sneak peek and everything at the final episode of chapter four, uh, Missing Your Mark, uh, basically it was there that a lot of people feel, well at least I feel anyway, and others have chimed in and said that this is basically where um, MLP, well, MLPG5 has found its footing, or is as I put it in one, uh, one video, uh, started to really cook. They're starting to really find that stride. And, you know, it's, it's understandable why some people, even those like, let's say, Starstrike and, and others, uh, feel uh, the way that they do about, you know, you, know, you know, when they ask the question of, why did it take so long? Why did you, you know, why did you take so long to get to this point in everything? And I... I look at this in kind of a similar vein with Friendship is Magic. You see, even though it took me a while, like I'm one of those late bloomers or mid to late bloomers with Friendship is Magic, I didn't, I didn't really start becoming a fan as I've documented until at least slowly, at least around 2015, 16, you know, because that's when I had one of my first figures, which was the mini Funko version of Luna. Um, but it wasn't an... But it wasn't until around that time that it started to really grow on me. And I went from, you know, I went from saying what I did about, hey, I'm not a brony or anything back in 2012, but I do respect it, to, hey, I am slowly becoming what I said I'm not. And, you know, here I am, a, you know, part of the brony Pegasus community. But, you know, be that as it may, one of the things about being a mid to late bloomer of any show, especially if it goes on for seasons and seasons and seasons, is you have the opportunity, if it's released on physical media like DVD or Blu-ray, or if it's released digitally, you know, on uh, platforms like Netflix, Hulu, or seasonally, like, uh, you know, where you could purchase it, you know, on places like Amazon Prime and, you know, um, iTunes and, and whatnot, you know, you have the, you basically, by using those methods, you will have the opportunity to go back and watch those seasons catch up with, you know, what you potentially, well, not potentially, but what you indeed missed, you know, during the first couple of seasons before you really started to come into the fandom yourself and started to understand why adults like my age were really into it. But doing so, it also allows you to look at the fact that as you look at the new generation of Make Your Mark, and you see that, as I mentioned, just recently in the past week with chapter four, it's, you know, it's hitting its stride. It's finally starting to cook on all cylinders and be what you hoped it would be. I look at this and, you know, thinking about it, I realized that Friendship is Magic is kind of the same way. You see, it is well documented that Friendship is Magic was originally meant to just be three seasons, you know, the first two seasons, establishing establishing who the characters were and all that, and then the third season ends with uh, Twilight becoming a, a princess, and that's it. That's what Lord Faust had in mind originally, you know, without even realizing that this was going to take off and be what it was, based on you know all the ideas that she had for the world and for the characters and all that, and those ideas and everything would be carried on by the likes of Megan McCarthy, Nicole Dubuque. You name it, you know, along with the rest of the writing team, like, you know, Amy King, a Amy Rogers, M.A. Larson, Jim Miller, you name it. You know, you know, she didn't obviously, you know, realize until you know, she started to see it herself and hear about it herself, like, oh, crap. You know, my idea really, you know, began some kind of generational trend that I don't know if we'll ever see it again. I mean, I know friendship, I know Make Your Mark, I should say, will try. But I don't know if it'll ever reach that status that Friendship is Magic did. However, if there's one thing I could honestly say that it does have in common with Friendship is Magic is, as I was mentioning, Friendship is Magic, again, not meant to go beyond three seasons. The moment it hit that fourth season, I mean, you even could see it. You could even see it in season two, mostly in the finale, and even season one in, some, in its finale. And, and those were great indications of the potential Friendship is Magic uh, would have or could have and everything in the future. But 
When you look at season four and onward, especially the battle with Tyrik, the Twilight battle with Tyrik and all that, and onward, when you look at season four from that perspective, that is when it started to hit its stride. That is when Friendship is Magic started to really cook on all cylinders. That's when it happened. And that was around the time, season four going into season five, when it was announced we were going to get a theatrical film. Because of the fact that not only was it growing in popularity with all the episodes that people saw in seasons one, two, and three, and the episodes that really stood out to them as showing the potential that you know this show could you know really build upon in future seasons, but also but also the fact that that potential was was indeed actually doing so with season four. And also they wanted to see maybe if the fan base would stay around for that long to hopefully want to see a movie even after let's say a couple of seasons later, uh, you know the show you know the show the show had basically, you know, stayed the course, is what I'm trying to say. I do apologize. Kind of fumbling my words there, I do apologize. But you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Basically, it took, in comparison, if you will, strange comparison, it took up to season four and beyond that, but mostly around season four and its finale, for uh, Friendship is Magic to find its real, to really start cooking and find that stride and that it never let go of, even up to the very end. And I look at this recent chapter of Make Your Mark, and I'm like, yes, it has some hits or misses in the episodes, there's no doubt. But there are episodes, and there are moments in there, that show that it's finally doing the same thing that Friendship is Magic did. It is hitting its stride. It is finding its footing. It is, you know, cooking on, it's starting to cook on all cylinders, when needed. And that's what Friendship is Magic did as well. Again, seasons one to three, which were which was supposed to be the only seasons, had moments, had episodes in there that showed the potential that lied within the show. And then as that potential got built upon in future seasons, it was because of that building, you know, that building that it was, you know, being uh, being utilized and everything, that Friendship is Magic started to really cook. It started to really hit the stride that it needed to hit long ago. That's what it started to do, and a lot of, and a lot of fans started to take note of that. They started to take note of that because now they were seeing that potential that was teased in seasons one, two, and three with certain episodes and finales. They were seeing that now being fully uh, embraced and realized with season four, five, six. Seven, eight, and nine. They started to see that, and here with Make Your Mark, you know, you could kind of see the same thing with uh, Chapter Four. You could see, you know, little by little, it's starting to find its stride. It's, start, it's starting to find its, you know, its footing. You know, it's starting to really start. It's starting to really cook, I should say, on all the cylinders it needs to cook on, and go in a direction that fans know. Uh, it could go in and really build upon that uh, in the long run. Now, I will admit that also adding in, you know, the Tell Your Tale uh, five-minute animated series that's on Netflix and YouTube, I admit that is a little too, that is a little much. But from a business standpoint, they probably figure that, hey, if you are a big enough brony, big enough Pegasus sister, big enough fan of MLP, and you want to give G5 this chance, then here's what you do. Here's what you do. You watch these five minute episodes because there will be some kind of interconnection, you know, between it and Make Your Mark. And like I said, I'll admit that is a little much, but they but they're doing that because they're basing it on the fandom that basically made Friendship is Magic what it is uh, to this very day. So they're basing it off that logic that hey, if you really are an MLP Brody Pegasus sister. You know, a fan of the community, here you go. Try this on for size, see what happens. And by having it all in one place, like with Netflix, it gives you the opportunity on your time to really watch the series and, you know, see, you know, and kind of, oh, not watch these series, but watch both series, I should say, and really start to connect the dots 
you know, and kind of view it as one whole continuity. That, you know, that's kind of what I was trying to allude to. Let me get some coffee here. I do apologize. But yeah, that's basically, in my opinion, what the, the, the method is. The method is, hey, if you're truly a fan, take time out, watch the five minutes, or a couple of five minute uh, Tell Your Tale episodes, and then also watch, you'll make your mark, and then you'll start connecting the dots and seeing that whole picture, you know, come, you know, come into, uh, into focus, into, come into fruition, if you will. But, yeah, I, when, when I hear people kind of, you know, acknowledge that this was the best chapter, that this is showing the potential and starting to really find its stride and really cook, like I've mentioned, you know, again, it reminds me, even being a mid to late bloomer, of what really got a lot of fans into the, in, into MLP. Not just, you know, some of the Pacific key episodes uh, they would be told to watch and all that, to kind of give, an, uh, give them an idea of this is why Friendship is Magic is popular not just with young kids, but with all ages, even mostly adults. But it was most specifically season four, and I believe, in my opinion, the Twilight versus Turek battle. Because of that moment, that's what really got a lot of fans who, like me, became mid to late bloomers and became integral, integral parts of the Brony Pegasus uh, community. Easy for me to say, the Brony Pegasus community. It, it, that's what really got them into starting to embrace Friendship is Magic and be you know, full on invested in it more so than they thought they would be. And to me, I'm feeling that same vibe, you know, here with Chapter 4 of Make Your Mark, especially at the end with the episode Missing Your Mark. Because, basically, when you look at the, twi- look at the not the Twilight, but the, with the, you look at the Sunny Opaline battle, even though it's not on the levels of Twilight versus Turek, it still gives you those vibes. It still gives you those vibes of, hey, this, you know, this feels familiar. It feels similar, you know, vibrational-wise to Twilight versus Turek. And, and to me, if, you're, if you get those feelings, like I did, I got those feelings, and I'm sure others did, if you start to get those feelings yourself, then you'll start noticing and realizing, hey, this might just be able to be a great successor. Or a great continuation of Friendship is Magic in Generation 4. Because now you're starting to realize, hey, it's finding its stride. It's starting to really cook. It's starting to be the series that we all believed and felt it could be as a continuation, a successor to Friendship is Magic. Because now, not only do you have things like that battle between Sunny and Opaline, but you also have the will building. You have Opaline going on a quest herself. In areas we didn't think we'd see in a show like this, but yet we are. You know, you're starting to put, as some some other fans put, you know, p- pointed out, you're starting to see conflict with the characters. You're you're starting to see things, you know, come full circle. Misty being the biggest example, in my opinion. So, when when I when I look at chapter four, like others have looked at chapter four. There is no doubt in my mind that it, it that vibrational wise, feeling wise, it has the same, it has that same atmosphere that season four of Friendship is Magic had when it really started to cook. It really started to come into its own, and it really started to bring in more of the fandom than ever before. So, to me, in all honesty, to me, in all honesty, if you know, if what we got in Chapter 4 has that familiar vibe that Season 4 did, especially with the finale, then I have no doubt in my opinion, as I've mentioned in the previous video, that Chapter 5, Season 2, whatever it's going to be, is really going to cook. It's really going to start hitting in areas that we didn't think it would hit in because of the way, it start, the way you know, Generation 5 after the movie started out. You know, it's going to start hitting those strides. It's going to start hitting all those bullet points, you know, within certain episodes. And yes, is it going to take maybe us watching, you know, certain five-minute episodes of Tell Your Tale to kind of piece it all together? Absolutely. But if even in those five minutes, you know, we get 
a similar, you know, feeling, a similar vibration or feel that we got with the with chapter four, mostly towards the end. That's identical almost to what we got when Friendship is Magic hit its stride with season four. Even in those five minutes of those Tell Your Tale episodes, I think it'll be worth watching. Because then, when you go and watch the newer episodes of Make Your Mark, you'll start connecting the dots and seeing the fuller picture of what's going to be happening uh, in the future. So to me, it'll be worth it if they can keep up the momentum, and I believe they can. Because again, I think what the writers were doing is they were finding their stride. They were trying to find the you know the momentum they're trying to find the key to unlock you know that uh, potential they know the series has and everything is and make it a worthy successor if not continuation of friendship is magic because apparently it's in the same continuity but different generations but yeah I, I, again i feel uh, again thinking about it i definitely feel excuse me i definitely feel a similar tone when it comes to when Friendship is Magic started to hit its stride with season four to make your mark hitting that similar stride with chapter four. So I feel that same vibration and if they can, re I wouldn't say repeat the success and the momentum Friendship, Friendship is Magic carried with it after season four and to seasons beyond including the movie, you know, but if they could keep that same kind of momentum or similar kind of momentum to where some of the episodes are tolerable, but other episodes are excellent, including watching the Tell Your Tale episodes to connect the dots, then I think we're going to be in for a great, great ride. I really do. I think we're going to be in for a great, great ride, in my opinion, with Chapter 5 and, you know, Chapter 5, Season 2, whatever you want to call it. Because, again, the, a lot of things are opening up here. You got Opaline going to on a, on a quest to go get more dragon magic, despite how confusing that might be to some. I think that will be straightened out in Chapter 5, Season 2. You got Misty in the role of a double agent. That is, that is something. That is something right there. That Misty thing, one of the shows that's trying to make a comeback, thanks to a group of fans and all that, uh, which is Sonic Satayam, Team Season is the people behind the, the revival animation-wise. You know, in the original series, Uncle Chuck, mostly in Season 2, served, a majority of season two, I should say, served as a double agent for the Freedom Fighters. He had his free reel back, thus he was able to give the Freedom Fighters a heads up of what was going on with Robotnik and his plans, until Robotnik caught on to it in the episode Spy Hog, which was the second to last episode of season two. Here, Misty being in that role, to where now she's kind of working in a double agent kind of manner, gives me you know, gives me those same kind of vibes. Because there's no doubt, in my opinion, that in Chapter 5, Season 2, in one of the episodes towards the end of that chapter, if you will, that Opaline's going to find out. She's going to find out, you know, that Misty not only got her cutie mark, but she is also working as a double agent for Sunny and her friends. So, I could definitely, in my opinion... I can definitely see that happening, and again, if you and again, if they can work properly with that and both make your mark and tell your tale to where you know in story in story it's building to that moment and everything. If you can work on that the way, in my opinion, you know they, you know the the crew that worked on Sonic's at AM season two did, as well as add in a bit of what made Friendship is Magic what it is. As well as add in that momentum you in that momentum that stride that you found in Chapter Four, mostly at the end. Then the whole double agent arc for Misty, I think, will have a great payoff. I really do. I think it'll have a great, great payoff, in my opinion. I, I really do. And uh, again, the the potential to build and that potential to build on the momentum you now have for Chapter Five, Season Two. It's just, it's just, you know, unimaginable, in my opinion. It's just unimaginable. Because of the fact that, you know, you have the potential, as we saw in Season 4, in a flashback, you have the potential to give us a grown-up, to give us fully, to give us 
Celestia and Luna returning, may be voiced once again by Nicole Oliver and Tabitha St. Germain. You have the you have the you have the opportunity, uh, you know, un unbelievable opportunity to bring them in, bring Twilight in, maybe find more about find out more about Opaline and her, why she's doing what she's doing and all that. You know, you have that uh, you have that untapped potential and momentum, you know, in front of you to build off of from you know chapter four and mostly its ending. Just like like I said, in comparison, Friendship is Magic had with season four, and they just build upon you know after that season after season, including including the movie as well. But you know, I just but anyway, though, guys, I just wanted to come on here, give you my thoughts on this. Honestly, I don't know if any of you have uh, basically seen or feel that the you know the uh, blah, blah, blah. let me rewind. Almost got tongue tied there. But let me get some coffee. There we go. Sorry, almost got tongue tied. But what I was saying is, I don't know if any of you probably feel the same way I do that you sense that same kind of comparison and, and built of momentum, you know, between the two. Uh, but if you do, let me know in the live chat during the premiere, as well as in the comments below. And super chats will be open in the live chat. I will put that in the description. So you guys can check that out if you want to donate there. As well as donate with the super thanks button after the premiere is done. And also click on the shop button to check out my Teespring store. It would be greatly appreciated. But guys, let me know. Let me know if you guys have, have felt the same way and everything. I would love to hear from each and every one of you on that. Uh, check me out at my BW Roses Discussions podcast. And all your favorite podcast outlets. But mostly, check me out at Spotify, guys. That will help me out tremendously. Because the more followers I get on Spotify the more I get an opportunity to unlock the Ambassador's ad, and that'll help me out in a big way from a financial standpoint. But also, but also check me out at my Patreon. $1 tier gets you a shout-out. $3 tier gets you a shout-out. And access to content you can't get anywhere else. As well, ladies and gentlemen, check me out. Also, don't, also if you want a Q&A, you can also get it with the $5 tier, which gets you the shout-out, you know, the access to content before anybody else, and then a Q&A. Uh, whenever I can get to it down the line, but I will let you know. But guys, let me know what your thoughts are, though, overall. Like I said, do you feel the same way I do? Do you see and sense that similar comparison of when Friendship is Magic started to hit its stride and gain the momentum it did with Season 4, you know, going into the future seasons up until the end? Do you feel that same comparison here with Make Your Mark after Chapter 4 and mostly after the final episode? You know, give me your thoughts down below, guys. Love to hear from each and every one of you on that. And your thoughts in the live chat. And until then, 